On this episode, we're tasting simple foods that feed the soul, buttery croissants and lovingly cured meats. My name is Lynn Broughton. I take visitors from all over the world on culinary walking tours of Guelph. It might not be a foodie hotspot, but it should be. Our chefs are creative, our food is local, and the flavors are out of this world. It's worth taking a taste detour. Meet Eric Chevalier, but don't call him that. He's Eric the Baker to his loyal customers. He opened his tiny French bakery on Christmas Eve in 2013, and I still get excited like a kid on Christmas morning every time I walk in. Like Santa Claus, he starts work when we're all fast asleep, making pastries the way his family has for generations. And like Santa Claus, he'll bring a smile to your face. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Always a pleasure. I, I think you actually have a whole name, but you're just known as Eric Baker in this town. From a long time ago, yeah. And that's, I guess, what it, it just felt good, felt yeah. right. And you tell me a little bit about the beginnings of your baking history, your story. Well, I guess I started uh, with my grandmother and uh, both my uncles as well, but mainly right. with my grandmother, about six years old. I'd be a rust grab running around the patios all over the place, right. bothering people. <laughs> and this was in, in, in Toronto? In uh, Toronto. Yeah. Yeah, this was the right. 70s. In 72 she opened. And then she got me to make like, little mice out of croissandos. Oh, with Little green practice. eyes and red eyes and oh, stuff so like that. Fun. So, yeah. Oh, you trickster, you. Yeah. Look at that. She had uh, one of the first bakeries in, or first I'd French bakeries? I'd say one of the first French bakeries, mm -hmm. yeah. The Petit Gourmet was on uh, Young and Rosedale. And so just, it's what you cut your teeth on, is It's what baking. I've done, yeah. Baking, cooking, everything. Yeah. Pastries, I wanted to become a pastry chef. Right, well, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to call myself <laughs> chef, because then it is right. the assumption you know everything, and right. you never really do, right? That's why I'm a baker. And with the leftover dough, do you just uh, roll that out again for the next batch? No, I keep the dough. Yeah. Because uh, you always put a little, a certain percentage, I guess, of the dough. Right. Back into the fresh dough. That oh. way it's the fermentation. That's right. where the, the flavor sort of comes out. So you've been baking a long time. When you were a young guy, you know, say in your 20s or something, um, was it hard to get up at? you know, 1.30 in the morning and, and come and open a shop? I don't think it was. Or? I don't think it was. I think we're all lunatics in the kitchen anyway. Right. But in my 20s, we'd work like maniacs. We'd be 18-hour days working, six days a week. It didn't matter, seven days a week. Yeah. We were go, go, go. It smells incredible in here. Everything from the beautiful passion fruit tarts to the sausage rolls might be the best flavors you've ever had. But his bread and butter, if you can pardon the pun, are his flaky, buttery, and simply heavenly croissants. Oh, the chocolate! Okay, I'm gonna stand near those ones. Uh, what kind of chocolate do you use? I use uh, cocoa berry, uh, cocoa. dark char. It's Beautiful actually no, no really sugar added or required, yeah. you know. I guess people do do a sort of a milk chocolate. You can do a white chocolate. Right. Uh, Love that I am seeing these things from the beginning. These many things that I enjoy. Well, I saw something that was kind of missing. It was the traditional French sort of croissant. Right. The pastry chef croissant, the flaky one that you the bite into that one. just <laughs> explodes, yeah. you know? My grandma used to do it at home. Did she? Yeah, she used to do her own doughs and roll them out. The butter, here, you want to try? Yes. Roll the croissant. And so, so it's double. I. I because you fold oh, it over, you okay. double it up. But you don't, you don't roll it double. Oh no, no. Okay. you can roll it on top. So right? I'm but just it does doing stick. this. Yeah, Would that you... first little roll is the most important. Right, right. I think. Look at, I'm a professional. <laughs> we kind of play on what we want to eat mm -hmm. that day, right? Mm -hmm. Or we have a craving for something. Okay, let's make it. <laughs> yes, right. Oh, yes, I don't <laughs> if I want it, I'm sure everybody That's else does. Fantastic. <laughs> So we've done half a tray there. If you okay. want to put that tray in the middle rack over there. I'm going to put this tray in the middle rack right here. 
because I'm a baker now. <laughs> right in there. So is that warmth? You've got hot water? It's oh, steam, yeah. Space. Yeah, cool. Um, it's steam. Oh, so it can't be too hot. Steam. Yeah, it can't be too hot. But uh, I sort of do it sort like of the traditional it. way with the boiling pots of water. Right. They do have technology now with the setting. Right, right. <laughs> but I, I still do it old school. I don't know why. Well, because it's good. what you know, and it, yeah. and you, it works, it too. It works. It works. What's going on in here? What's happening in there? Well, the Breakfast. raisin buns are almost ready. Well. This is where the payoff is when you see things get pulled out of the oven. Uh, do you have a hot side of your oven? Top shelf is always the hottest, right. at least for this oven, and every oven has its own character, yeah. so it, it varies. Uh, top shelf hottest, uh, bottom shelf second hottest, then the second shelf is the third hottest, fourth hottest, and sort of yeah. second from the bottom is the coldest shelf. Right, right. That's where you put stuff where it can take its time. Yes. You know, whereas the croissants, they always start on the top. Of course. And then as you as you bake them, then they start coming down. Amazing. You so need you, that initial Of course. <laughs> that makes eat. sense. The Once you start something, that's it. You can yeah. have your coffee, smoke your cigarette, whatever. Right. But when it doze out, <laughs> doze yeah, that, mixing, that's what you're doing. <laughs> wow. you've started a four hour shift that you can't stop, right? You yeah. Gotta, Can I have them all? Or even just oh, one? You have to wait a couple minutes. You're going to burn yourself. Oh. Look at that. Oh, the chocolate ones. Yeah. Okay, that would burn. The chocolate Gorgeous. will definitely burn. Okay, I'll wait. You got to wait. You got to be patient. Two, one minute? Two minutes? Two minutes. May I? Please do. Thank you. It's so flaky. It's okay that I sort of messed it up. That is a beautiful thing that probably the one I made. You think? <laughs> it is. It's one of those are, are oh, the ones you so rolled great. on there. I'm so lucky. Look at that flaking off. So gorgeous. I'm gonna have a bite. <laughs> Yum. Mmm. Now that's the reaction. <laughs> oh, that is good. I can't tell you how good without it falling out. Beautiful, flaky, buttery heaven. Loved it. Eric, can I marry you? <laughs> Paula might not like that. I'm spoken for, yeah. Okay. <laughs> she I am she too. gets mad. <laughs> I am too, actually. But thank you so much for having us here today and letting me speak with my mouthful. Uh, come by anytime. You're thank always you, welcome. Eric. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs> After starting the day with an espresso and a croissant, I love stopping into Trotters to see what they have for lunch. Let's go inside. Head butcher Brett McDonald breaks down the whole animal, snout to tail. Trotters supplies many of the best downtown restaurants. Unlike other butcher shops, they also cure meats on site, which means you can eat right away. We're a small place. Mm -hmm. uh, we do uh, a number of different uh, things. We kind of we took on a lot in the in the very beginning right. by by going into the the dry curing, the uh, sort of salami making, the wholesale to restaurants in the area right off the bat in the retail. Yeah. But yeah, we're we're sourcing everything uh, and everything local. Um, everything Excellent. everything Ontario, small farms from around the area. Yeah. Is it? Organic meats, predominantly? Uh, we don't necessarily go with straight um, organic yeah. stuff, but uh, I stick with uh, you know the ethically raised animals, right. like antibiotic, hormone-free, that kind of uh, deal. We're, we're actually slowly moving into now um, integrating with a, a single farmer um, that I've been talking to that is going to be raising just pigs solely for us. Um, and so we're going to be able to visit and sort of uh, have an idea of, like, um, you know, uh, just know exactly what the diet is going to be right. and, and sort of even even play around with different things uh, yeah. and finishing on on different things if we want to if we want to go heavy on apples or, or, or peanuts or something like that and right? seasonal so, i imagine comes into play too sometimes of course yeah yeah, yeah. Oh. fantastic I see that you are uh, stamped, a grade A stamp I, guy I, yourself. Yeah, I felt I should stamp myself, yeah. <laughs> so you're really proud to be a, to be a butcher. Of what course got I, yeah. you yeah, What got sure. you to get to this point in this place you've had for how many years now? Well, I, we've, we've been open for about three and a half years three and now. Three and a half years, yeah. yeah. I was a chef in a few restaurants in the area. I've been for about 15 years, 16 years now in the industry. Right. Um, and just sort of developed a passion for curing meats. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the whole uh, like nose to tail butchery, that kind of right, thing. Right, exactly. Um, Especially coming from like the charcuterie side of things, that I, I really uh, like. It's, it's it's incredibly important to use the whole animal, and, and it's a it's a great outlet. 
um, that we have here at the store to uh, to break down whole whole animal and, and use the whole thing. Can you tell me about this beautiful board that you've created for us? I can. So we have a mix of uh, smoked uh, things and, and cured on the board mm -hmm. here. So this is our this one here is our smoked capicola. Right. Um, this is uh, a saucisson sec. So it's it's a fairly um, simply flavored. It's just a, a fairly heavy on the garlic, right. and then the rest of that is uh, um, you know just sort of speaking to the to the quality of pork that we're using. Yeah. Um, and so that's a, a fermented salami and then hung to dry. Uh, so this is our chorizo, similar style. Right. Um, and this one here's a, um, a smoked ham hock uh, and egg terrine. Um, and then we have our uh, smoked duck breast that we do as well. Oh, nice. Um, and a cotto salami here. So that one is a, a smoked uh, beef uh, salami. Right. And so um, different aging for each of these things? It is. The larger diameter stuff always takes quite a bit longer. Of course, that um, makes sense. But that's, uh, I, I like these little ones too because they take to it really quickly and then they're, they're in and right. out a little bit faster. When you say take to, to it, what do you mean? Uh, just, the, just, the, uh, just the drying and the, and the proper uh, um, uh, con consistency inside. Right, they, they, right. They, they, they take fast. It, it's a faster uh, cure. Can I? Of course, yeah. Can I have a piece of, look how I'm going straight for the chorizo <laughs> because that's a familiar one to me. And then I'm going to, I'd like to try them all really, but, mmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, there's, there's like a beautiful, like very gentle heat to it. Gorgeous flavor. And you'll get, you'll find a little bit of tanginess from the red wine and then the mm -hmm. actual fermenting itself like from it. Um, this, this one's really cool in comparison. Uh, the texture because this one has a, a quite a bit more fat to it and so it'll really get like sort of creamy and buttery as you, uh, as right. you eat it. Yeah. Well having come from Eric the Baker's we're into creamy and, and buttery. And bison for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh that's gorgeous. Right, a little more subtle but Great, great flavors coming through. Yeah. What are these sauces that you have around too? Uh, this one is just, this one's just a, uh, a grainy uh, Dijon Grainy mustard, mustard. yeah. Yep. Yep. Tell me again, this is called? It, that one's cotto, so it's beef and you'll get a bit of caraway and black pepper. Yes. Mm -hmm. Again, quite lean as opposed to. It is, yeah. The, mm -hmm. Where did you learn how to do all this? So this one here, the smoked capicola, is uh, the, the base behind that one is the brine mm -hmm. um, that you're using. So you'll, you'll uh, inject it with the mm -hmm. brine and then let it sit covered um, for five days. And so that was a bit of a trial and error when we right. first opened up Figuring the shop to figure out our brine that we wanted to use for some specific things. So we, we have two main brines that we use, uh, ones for the smoked capicola and then ones for a pastrami. And so we'll, right. it was, and so it's a, it's a mixture of um, you know reading books and all of that yes. and then trial and error and picking different parts that you like out of certain recipes and just, you know, and then just sort of the background knowledge that, that I have myself with, From the with spices and, and mixing things together. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. That was beautiful. There's a... I don't know if it's because I've had bites of so many today, but there's some, I think the brining really comes out. In yeah, we, we use, uh, there's like the fennel is one of the bigger ones yes. that kind of come through and it, and anise in the, in the brine, yeah. yeah. And so that one is, uh, it complements a lot of the pork that we do. And yeah, so it's soft nice. and tender, it's yeah. amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Can I now walk out the door? <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. <laughs> With this whole tray, do you think anyone will notice walking down the street? I may be chased by people. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us here. Thank you very much. Loved it. I hope you enjoyed this delicious exploration of some of the best tastes that Guelph has to offer. And you'll make it a stop on your next taste detour.